Russian troops have struck an armored plant in Ukraine's Kharkiv region, Russian Defense Ministry reported on Thursday. Russia's Iskandaram Operational Tactical Missile System launched a group missile strike against the Kharkov armored plant, the Defense Ministry's press service reported. As a result of the strike, two workshops for the repair and restoration of armored vehicles were destroyed. The restoration of armored vehicles of the armed forces of Ukraine in the workshops of the plant has been stopped. Russia stepped up attacks on Ukraine's territory with the use of Iskander missile system this month. Earlier, Russia struck a convoy of military equipment in Kharkiv region. In another attack Russia hit the Poltava airport, destroying an I-24 helicopter and several cars. In early July, Russia's defense ministry reported that an Iskander M tactical missile system was used to deliver a strike on Ukrainian warplanes at the Murgorod Air Base, destroying five Su-27 multi-role fighters and damaging another two Su-27. Britain must prepare for war in three years with four countries, including Russia, UK general. The British armed forces need to be ready for war in three years. Currently, there is a threat from four countries, including Russia, according to the head of the British armed forces, General Sir Rowley Walker. Walker predicted that Russian President Vladimir Putin will be very, very dangerous when he emerges from the war in Ukraine and will want retribution against Western countries that support Ukraine's defenders. This situation could arise regardless of whether Russia wins or loses. The point here is when you think Russians are down, they will come roaring back to get their vengeance, he said. He also admitted China's invasion of Taiwan, spoke about Iran's intentions to develop nuclear weapons, and recalled the threat from North Korea. According to him, all four of the above-mentioned countries are establishing relations with each other, exchanging weapons and technologies. That is why you get to this point by 2027 to 2028, this convergence may have reached some sort of mutual singularity and your ability to deal with them in isolation, a specific crisis that can be managed by the rules-based system, I think is significantly diminished, Walker said. At the same time, he clarified that Britain is not on an inevitable path to war, but it urgently needs to rebuild its ability to deter future wars. NATO officials and generals have repeatedly stated that Russia could attack the alliance. They shared their predictions about such a threat. In particular, as noted by Bundeswehr Inspector General Karsten Brewer, Russia may be ready to attack NATO territory in five to eight years. During this period, they are likely to gather a sufficient number of personnel and weapons. We observe that the Russian army orients towards the West. In five to eight years, Moscow's armed forces will be equipped with the material base and personnel needed to attack NATO territory, Brewer noted. According to the general, this assessment is based on his own analytical data, intelligence information and the armed forces of Germany's allies, as well as statements by Russian President Vladimir Putin. At the same time, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky emphasized that Russia could attack NATO if Ukraine loses the war. Russians sent foreign mercenaries to the front en masse in Ukraine. The situation at the front is quite tense now. Russian occupiers are attacking from absolutely all directions they can and are looking for methods to move the Ukrainian armed forces line of defense. The commander of the Kara Nebeznaya UAV crew of the 4th Operational Brigade Rubes of Ukraine, Andriy Otchenash, noted on the air of Espresso that the enemy is sending a huge number of reserves to the battlefield, including foreign mercenaries. We have already noticed blacks, Indians and other mercenaries who are ready to destroy our country for money. They are indeed very active in assault operations, but the defense is held by the Rubes Brigade and they are objectively not succeeding. Even those small achievements that they have cost incredible efforts with a huge loss of personnel. The efficiency factor is absolutely minimal, the defense lawyer explained. According to Ot Chenash, the mercenaries do not know how to fight and do not have normal communication with their units since they do not understand the language. Sometimes, say, they tell some Indian, go there, 
there is a dugout there. He goes all the way to our positions because they do not understand Russian, do not understand each other. This is just another deception. I am more than sure that these mercenaries were promised much better conditions, better places. They are simply sent to be butchered, to die, where they do not know what to do, so they just sit under fire. The best option, of course, is for none of the representatives of other nationalities to go to fight for this bloody Russian imperialist regime, the fighter emphasized. He added that foreigners are captured by Ukrainians and here they are communicated with in English through a translator and even using peculiar gestures. Recently, it was reported the Russian Federation sends Syrian refugees to fight in Ukraine. This is being done with the help of intermediaries who transported refugees to Europe via Russia and Belarus. Syrian and Russian telegram channels are distributing videos of natives of Egypt, Syria, Somalia and India in military uniform, as well as photos and videos of Russian passports that are issued to them. All the passports of the Syrians were issued in Yakusha, the investigation noted. There was a case when a citizen of the African state of Sierra Leone was captured by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. In May, it became known that Russia was luring Cubans to fight in Ukraine with large salaries and passports.